Okay, so let us start uh, another problem on uh, root locus. So this is a problem in given. So what is step number one? So get the general information. That is number of poles. That is the denominator terms. How many terms are there? Two. Number of zeros. That is the numerator term. It is equal to one. So therefore, number of branches will be equal to number of Course, that is equal to how much? Two. Okay. Starting point of the branches. What is the starting point? That is S is equal to 0 minus 1. So terminating points are end point. That is S is equal to minus 2 and infinity. That means one of the branch is going to end at minus 2. Another branch is going to end at infinity. Next step number 2, we need to draw the pole 0 plot, okay, we are going to draw the pole 0 plot, what are the things we have, this is equal to what, 0, zero. so this is a, a pole or a 0, so this is equal to 0 is a pole and minus 1 is a pole, minus 2 is a what, 0. Okay. 0, minus 1, minus 2. These are the roots of S where 0 and minus 1 is a pole, minus 2 is a 0. Okay. So this is on the real axis. Now I am going to draw an imaginary line between 0 and minus 1. How many roots on the right side? One root. So therefore root locus is possible. Now, I am going to draw the another imaginary axis between minus 1 and minus 2. How many roots to the right side? 2. That is an even number. Okay? No rule locus. Okay? So, next one. Step number 3. What is the step number 3? We need to find out the number of asymptotes okay so that is equal to p minus z so what is the pole 2 minus 1 that is equal to 1 so there is only one asymptote next step number 4 angle of asymptotes correct huh? so angle of so in this only it will come not yes sir so step number 3 and like angle of asymptotes is equal to 2Q plus 1 into 180 divided by A minus L. So Q is going to vary from 0, 1, 2, 3 like this. But number of asymptotes is equal to 1. So Q value will be equal to only 0. 0. Q will be equal to 0. So therefore, theta 0 is equal to how much? 1, 80. So after substituting q is equal to 0, so I am going to get the angle of asymptote that is theta 0 is equal to 180 degree. Next step number 4. What is step number 4? Centroid. To so find out the centroid. Centroid is equal to summation of real part of force minus summation of real part of 0 divided by p minus z. What is summation of real part of whole 0 and 0 and minus 1 minus summation of real part of 0 that is equal to minus 2 divided by 1. How much is this? 1. one. So we are going to get plus 1. I hope you understood up to here. Yes, sir. Okay. Step number 5. So, what is step number 5? To find out the breakaway points. So, what is the formula we have? In? We need to consider the characteristic equation 1 plus g of s h of s is equal to 0. So, what is 1 of 1 plus g of s into h of s? S plus 2 divided by s into 
S plus 1. This is equal to 0. So we need to get the equation for K. So what is the equation for K? So this can run as S yes, yes plus 1 plus K S yes plus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, K is equal to what? Yes, minus right? Or yes square plus yes. It's a minus s square plus s divided by s plus two. So this is a k. So this is equated to one. Equation number one. So now what we need to do? We need to differentiate k with respect to s. So that means differentiate k with respect to s. So now this is how we are going to differentiate. We are going to apply the quotient rule. What is quotient rule? V by V B of U by V. Do you remember? So this will be equal to V into D by D T of U minus U D by D T of V divided by V square. So this is a quotient rule. We are going to apply it to this one and we are going to differentiate this equation number 1. Okay, so we have to differentiate k with respect to s by applying the quotient rule and we have to equate it to 0. So after that, what we are going to get? We are going to get s square plus 4s plus 2s plus 2 is equal to 0. So this is the final equation after differentiating k with respect to s. Now with the help of cat c, we are going to equate it to, I mean we are going to find out the roots of s. So what are the roots of s? s is equal to how much? And s is equal to how much? Minus 0.4y. 3.41 and here 0.5 minus 0.58 0.58 okay so we got two values of s okay so now we need to find out the validity of this one how to find out the validity of this one we are going to substitute the values of s in the equation number one and find out the value of k so what is k when s is equal to minus 3.41 and what is k when s is equal to minus 0 0.58? Please tell me the answer. So when s is equal to minus 3.41, what is the value of k? 5.82. And when s is equal to 0 0.58, what is the value of k? 0 0.17 See here the both the values of k is positive so that means both are valid ok so let me show you so this is a pole 0 plot right so we got 0 minus 1 and we have a minus 2 0 and minus 1 is a pole whereas minus 2 is a 0 so we are getting two valid breakaway points or we need to say this is a breakaway and this is a breakaway. So which is 0 minus 0 0.58. So it will be somewhere here right. So breakaway. Why it is called as breakaway means 0 and minus 1 is a pole. So if we are going to get a breakaway in between the two poles so then it is called as breakaway point. And another one is minus 3.41. So where is somewhere here I am going to get minus 3.41. So to the right side what we have? <coughs> minus 2. That is a 0. Okay. So if I am going to get uh, a break away in between a 0. So then it is called as break in point. 
so break away is between two post whereas between the two zeros we will be having a break in point so that's why so this is a break away point and this one is a break in point is it clear so now what is the next step step number 6 right so what is section number 6 intersection of root locus with the imaginary axis so that is the step number 6 but in this problem so we don't need to find out the step number 6 why because complete root locus is towards the left side okay complete root locus is towards the left side so that's why there is no need to find out the step number 6 intersection of root locus with the imaginary axis is not required in this case okay next step number 7 what is step number 7 to find out the angle of departure and angle of arrival if it is applicable so when it will be applicable when we have a complex poles and a complex zeros we have to find out the angle of departure and angle of departure angle of arrival and angle of departure so in this case also it is not required so now what we have to do we need to write down the root locus right so we have to draw the root locus for this Okay, so now I am going to draw the pole zero plot. So this one is zero minus one minus two minus three and up to minus four. So this is a real axis. Okay, so imaginary axis plus one i plus two i. Let's see. It is not at all required in this case. So simply for the sake of representation, I represented the imaginary axis also. Now, after this, what we have to do? So we need to mention the roots. So zero is one root, minus one and minus two. What is the minus two here? Four zero. Whereas minus one minus minus uh, zero is the poles. Okay. After this, what we did? We find out the Centroid. What is the centroid? Plus one. Plus one. Plus one, right? So plus one is the centroid. So centroid is equal to plus one. Next, what is the angle of asymptote? 180 degree. So that means from here I am going to the angle of asymptotes. So this is the theta zero is equal to 180 degree. That is the angle of asymptote. Okay. So what else we found out? We found out break away and break in points. So what is the break away point? First break away. Zero point five eight. Right. So zero minus zero point five eight is the first break away point. So this is a break away point. So we got another one. Right. So that is a break in point. How much is that? Minus three point minus three point four one. So this is called as break in point. Okay, this is a break away point and break in point. So these are the values we got. It. So now it is the time to write the locus, right? So at this point, what is the value of k? When minus zero point five eight, what is the value of k? Zero point one seven. At this point, what is the value of k? Five point eight two. So as we know, how many branches are there? There are two branches are there. So branches are going to start from poles. How many poles we have? Two poles. That is zero and minus. So both are going to start from zero, minus one and zero. It will approach towards the break away point. After this, from here it is going to break one branch. Another branch is going to break from here. The both the branches are going to meet at where <coughs> minus three point four one. That is a break in point. Okay. So this is a break-in point. 
So when it meets at the breaking point, one of the branch is going to end to the where? Minus 2. As we know, the branches are going to start from the poles and it is going to end to the 0. So we have minus 2 is also one of the 0. One of the branch is going to end at minus 2. Whereas another branch is going to end at infinity. That means it is going to follow the asymptote. Right? So this is how we are going to draw the pole zero plot or a root locus for this given problem. Okay? And the final thing, what we have to do? We need to write down the comment on stability. What is the comment of stability? See, in this case, for all the values of k greater than 0, okay? So, entire root locus is lying to the left side of the S-plane. Hence, the system is stable. For the all the values of k greater than 0, the system is stable. Is it clear? So, this is about this problem.